During the day, I work on search engine optimization for companies. I help them to uh, maintain or achieve and maintain high search results for generic queries relating to their business service or their product. And by night, I wear a cape and uh, uh, I'm a bit of a media activist. If you want to find out uh, uh, what is really going on on page three at the moment, just search for page three and you'll see a page on bloggerheads uh, in the top ten that explains the unique and rather strange way they've been exploiting these women. Uh, if you want to learn what's really going on at the Daily Mail, uh, one of the projects I'm involved in, Daily Mail Watch, should be one of the top search results for Daily Mail. Uh, there was once a Daily Mail journalist called Julie Malt who described uh, what I did as Google bombing, and she was wrong. And Google even explained to her that she was wrong and why she was wrong, and still she carried on as if it was real. Uh, so now if you search for Julie Malt, uh, you'll find out that, well, she's an idiot. Um, uh, there's things like, all of you here are aware of the C word. You're all aware that there are several swear words that are based on genitalia. And I didn't think it was right that the C word should be the worst word because it goes vagina and then bottom and then penis and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm campaigning for the word cloaca uh, to be the very worst word based on a, a form of genitalia. And to get my point across, if you search for a picture of cloaca in Google Images, you'll find several pictures of Richard Littlejohn. Uh, so that's basically what I do. And I want to expand on uh, the thoughts on the Daily Mail and what they do. Any page you go to on the Daily Mail website, you'll see a column of what's called link bait. And though the majority of uh, the Daily Mail's politics is about being morally outraged about this or that, all of the link bait is celebrity ass. That's it. You know, it, it, it's bikinis and gossip and uh, 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 sexual innuendo and just it's there to generate inbound links to the website so they can then later claim to be the world's leading news site when they're not they're the world's leading pits and ass website uh, so um i'm mainly here for questions i think i've talked enough um any questions um you should look at accumulating relevance as uh, like accumulating matter as a celestial body uh, uh, Jupiter, for example, uh, pretty much sucks up all the debris that enters our solar system because it's such a massive gravity well surrounding the planet. If, uh, uh, if over time you accumulate more mass, more relevance than your competitor, then you are going to attract more visitors over time and in doing so attract more relevance. So, yes, question? Oh, do you read the do you read the parts about where we're being uh, uh, overwhelmed by floods of immigrants, or do you read the bits about Lady Gaga's bottom cleavage? Lady Gaga. Right. In doing so, you are increasing the Daily Mail's influence with regards to their rather false message about floods of immigrants. So maybe you'd want to get your bottom cleavage news elsewhere. Until, until very very recently, there used to be a website that would cache. Daily Mail um, uh, uh, articles and Sun articles and articles from the web blog of Nadine Doris, which I found very amusing. Uh, uh, so you could link to them and discuss them without actually adding to their reputation. Um, and uh, 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 there is a culture of awareness of Google juice, uh, uh, and there are people who will. Normally, when when I try to discuss something on my website, I'll try to link to the source to back up the source. However, if it's an extremely well-known source and everyone knows that the Daily Mail did this or said that, I'll probably exclude the link from the Daily Mail or because it's, it's on my blog and I have full control of the code, I'll include a rel equals no follow on the, um, uh, on the uh, hyperlink uh, uh, because uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite diligent about things like that. I don't hand out Google juice willy-nilly. I know what it's worth. So uh, there are ways to discuss the Daily Mail and be disgusted by the Daily Mail without actually building on their reputation. I've always specialised in the relationship between communities and search engine results. So I've never been the type of person to hide code or, or do any tricksy bits because it's always been about the relationship. So from my point of view, uh, no. 
Uh, I've always been very open about it um, and always tried to advise clients about carving with the grain, as it were, and try to um, uh, uh, take advantage of natural forces that are out there. Think of it as, as making your website aerodynamic is the technical side, but what you want to do is take advantage of the uplift, the, um, uh, the thermal updrafts that, that result from people being interested in what you have to say, and that takes you higher. Uh, okay, I used to say it was about three things, uh, uh, relevance, a reputation, and robots, and, and then it was really about two things, uh, because robots, yeah, indexability got better and better over time, so then it was about robots, uh, sorry, about relevance and reputation. But when it comes down to it, um, you gain your reputation by being relevant. Uh, 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 <laughs> So um, uh, to give you an example, one of the best books you can read uh, about um, uh, community marketing is a book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. And in it, he uses um, uh, the popularly accepted story of Paul Revere and the other guy. Uh, uh, and the famous ride that they went to warn uh, uh, the militia that the British troops were coming to seize uh, leaders and seize the weapons. Now, Paul Revere had spent years, months before fostering goodwill with, with hundreds of different people in hundreds of different villages. And the historical fact around Paul Revere's ride was it wasn't just Paul Revere, there were like 40 or 50 guys. But when you look at it in detail, the other guy went from village to village and didn't know which door to knock on, and they didn't know him from Adam. He got nowhere. Paul Revere went from village to village and said, you, get five guys from the next village. You get five. He knew exactly which door to knock on and they trusted him enough for him to build up almost an army of messages before they got an army together. To build up your reputation, you need to network and you need to be relevant. Uh, um, I think the um, Amanda Knox story and how the Daily Mail reported her as guilty, not only reported that she was guilty, but reported how she reacted to being guilty and that, uh, how she was transported to jail after being found guilty when none of this had happened. Now, this is old school colliding head-on with new school because he'd written two versions of the story ahead of time, including reactions, uh, uh, and the wrong one was uploaded. Now, the reason they're in such a gosh darn hurry to be there first is because there is a first mover advantage. If you are among the first stories to be within the top five to 10 search results for a specific search term, uh, uh, then you can consolidate that over time because people will naturally go for the first thing that's available. Uh, I would say if you wanted to work on building your reputation over time or if you wanted to succeed in what's going to be the future of journalism, then you should stop looking into reactive forms of journalism and look at proactive forms of journalism. I personally, uh, 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 I've got a love of data, so I like investigative journalism, which I would assume would be the major form of that, that particular type. So being the source of the news, as opposed to uh, uh, someone who is reacting to the source. Um, certainly not uh, uh, straying into any yellow journalism where you are the cause of the news. That would be wrong. Oh, easy. Easy. The, uh, the big problem all the big companies have is trying to generate uh, uh, authentic, uh, uh, spontaneous inbound links to their website. And uh, uh, you don't have to be part of the Occupy this or Occupy that movement to have any kind of um, uh, 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 innate distrust for or hostility towards large corporations. There's, uh, uh, you'll be able to find lots and lots of statistics for this where people are hesitant to link to uh, material that they know is commercial. Uh, uh, for instance, you're probably familiar with this feeling yourself, you've seen a really clever joke, very well executed on YouTube, but then you find out that it's an ad for cough drops and you figure, well, I'm not gonna send that to my friends because I don't want them to think that I'm a twat. <laughs> uh, so uh, um, they can throw a lot of money at that, but what they can't do is generate goodwill out of that money, or well, it's, 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 it's not economically viable for them to do that. It has to be genuine altruism, uh, uh, because if they try to fake it, the first thing you're gonna have is a troublemaker like me pointing out where they're trying to fake it. 
Well, there's, there's two reasons. One, uh, uh, you need someone who uh, is capable of looking at a lot of information and organizing it according to uh, uh, an overriding keyword strategy. And that's not an easy thing to do. And you could try automating that process, and many people have, but you really need a human brain to do it properly. Um, uh, the other thing you need is a native guide, because the web is, is like a different country. Um, uh, uh, everyone in this room is aware of what a shock site is, but if we took it out of this room and we discussed things like Goatsy and Lemon Party, they, they, it would blow their mind. They've, they've got no concept of what this kind of thing is. It's, um, it's a different community and it's a harsher community. And there are, there are harsher lessons to learn for people who come blundering in saying, hey guys, I'm one of you. It, you know, it's, you had it for a fall that way. You can't just throw money at the problem. Um, and for a lot of companies, I'll give you a very good example of this. Uh, for a lot of companies, you can't try to foster spontaneous goodwill if there is an outstanding issue between you and the community. Let's take Nike, for example. Very, very early example of viral going wrong. Uh, they produced a shoe where you could put whatever you wanted on the shoe. You could have whatever word you like stitched on the side of the shoe. And uh, they were very clear about the terms and conditions, no profanity. Uh, no alternative brands, and that was it. That was the end of the rule. And uh, one guy became one of the top search results for Nike because he wanted the word sweatshop, and they wouldn't let him. You know, you, you can't tap into this force if there's uh, uh, stuff that your company is doing that's not on, because it is a natural force. The wind will blow the way it wants to blow. You can't control that. There's a term I came across recently that, that's um, very useful for this. Uh, it's called halo, where you have a core term that you want to be relevant for, and there are other associated terms that uh, orbit around it. Um, so, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I would like to be a, a high search result for uh, Daily Mail or The Sun um, uh, uh, or uh, the, the Express because of the three... Media Watch websites that I'm involved in, but over time we also want to be a high search result for uh, 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 Melanie Phillips or Richard Littlejohn. These are all associated words, and Google knows that these words are associated. So if you're going to specialise, uh, uh, it's not going to be a problem. If you're looking generally at being uh, at covering the entire uh, uh, news spectrum, uh, then you need to categorise it intelligently, right up to the very top level of, of politics. And underneath the politics will be the different parties, and under the parties will be the different uh, uh, cabinet and shadow, shadow cabinet ministers, and under them will be the backbench MPs. And under entertainment will be television and radio with subcategories, and underneath television and radio there will be crossover celebrities and celebrities that are only on television, only on radio. Do you see what I mean? You accumulate relevance over time. Uh, uh, if I'm constantly blogging about uh, 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 any particular uh, person or body, then I'm going to accumulate relevance not only for that person, but for associated terms as well. Kind of. I think the best, uh, the best approach I've seen has been the Guardian's uh, take on live blogs, uh, because they're um, completely in tune with how Facebook and Twitter works. So what you have is a live blog that you can arrive at at any time, a complete stranger to the issue, and, and still be able to read what's going on and what the very latest thing is. But there are uh, um, uh, anchor tags for each component. So if you want to link to the latest development, you still can. So they're generating links into the live blog every time a new development comes, and they're the ones with, the, uh, with this development or with this quote, uh, 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 and they accumulate the majority of the links over time that way. How do you think the sentiment machine detects sarcasm? <laughs> um, uh, uh, the <coughs> Most of you will be aware of uh, uh, a Charles Darwin going to the Galapagos Islands and having a unique insight into the different finches that were there. It was like a snapshot. Uh, that allowed him to see a, a larger time frame. Uh, uh, because I've been competing in and experimenting in search engines since 1998, I've not only watched it evolve, I've learned the direction that it, it, it's, in, it's evolving in. And it's an unchanging direction. Uh, they are working at 
uh, uh, detecting uh, not only the actual relevance, the true relevance, but not just of text, but now within RTF files, those filthy PDF files, uh, uh, video even. Uh, uh, Google can, uh, as, ya as YouTube, can hear the audio of your YouTube. Uh, unless you do something really clever at the moment, like flip it over as a mirror image, it can even see. Uh, uh, but there are cultural uh, uh, influences to uh, 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 robbing someone of reputation if you want to talk about them negatively, like the relical no vol follow value, uh, uh, and websites like the one that would cache the old version of the Daily Mail. So Google is getting better at it, they're not at it yet, but, but everyone here plays a role in how Google determines what is positive and what is negative, because it's our behaviour that they're watching. Uh, uh, I maintain one of the highest search results for a huge range of queries to do with, uh, you can try some of these, uh, make money from porn, porn affiliates, porn, make porn, that kind of stuff. And the, re the result is the porn report. And the reason it's not only um, uh, on that front page and has been for close to 10 years now is because it's an alternative voice to almost everything else on that front page. Uh, uh, it explains why it's a huge waste of your time when almost everyone else on the front page is saying uh, there's a quid in it for you. So uh, um, there's room for dissent, basically. And uh, the first result isn't the only search result. It's, there's, a, um, uh, there's what's known as above the fold and below the fold. Above the fold is the top five search results. You can be the third search result and still get the majority of traffic you know, it's not necessarily always the number of one search results that counts. It's, it's who's got the most compelling page title, who's got the most descriptive page title. And with that, over time, you can actually gravitate towards the top. And it's an ongoing battle. Uh, 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 and it's a, 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 a combination of things that makes up this eventual decision to place someone at number one, two, or three. And it's an ongoing process. So the, uh, uh, um, the Google juice going to a particular website and whether or not it's positive or negative is a small factor. Uh, I can understand why Google would probably want to um, uh, discount certain forms of links, but I mean, the, the community awareness out there is such that people try to avoid it manually, and Google knows that, or they should know that. Um, uh, uh, um, Goatsy is probably the very best example because it's the oldest example. Uh, uh, does any, just raise your hand if you don't know what Goatsy is. Oh, wow, okay. Um, a shock site is uh, a way to uh, um, confront someone with something shocking and to have an impact on them, a negative impact on them, just by using a word and by using their own curiosity against them. And what you would do is drop into a chat room and you would use this word, oh, she's just searched for it. And um, don't, don't search for it. You don't need to know this stuff. Um, so you could come into a, a chat room or a forum and use this word and someone else would search for that word uh, 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 and you could say, oh, it was your own fault for searching for it. Now, I don't know if you know how this works, but uh, um, your brain uh, uh, dedicates brain cells to certain visual images uh, uh, and what is seen cannot be unseen. Uh, um, and it is, it is like... Okay, I, look, pardon my terminology here. Uh, but it's a web culture thing, it's called skull fucking, you know, uh, uh, because you're essentially raping someone's brain. You are confronting them with a picture that they will never be able to escape in their life. And it's such an ingrained part of web culture, this confrontation. You will never see this in the street. You will never have an argument with someone in the street well, uh, where they will turn around and go, ha, picture of a man's asshole. You know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't work. But but this web culture is leaking into the mainstream because the majority of web designers are part of the web culture and uh, uh, there's always been a bit of a suspicion where you see something on a poster and it could be one of two things. Either you have this brain cell dedicated to the image of Goatsy which is a man's bottom and it's cavernous and he's spreading it apart. And, uh, uh, and either you associate it with this and it's purely accidental or the web designer is uh, trying to express himself in a rather special way. Uh, uh, there's been a Time magazine cover. Uh, in fact, there's a whole uh, entry on Wikipedia that should, should I mean, I'm, I'm only guessing here, but it should reference several levels of this. Uh, uh, but there have been all sorts of uh, people attempting 
to put this image into the public domain or put this word into the public domain as it's spreading from web culture. The point I tried to make by raising that term is that the web community is um, uh, uh, its frontier space and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's lawless in a lot of ways. And you also have not only that lawless component, uh, but there's a, there's a very old Walt Disney cartoon uh, uh, where Goofy uh, uh, is a driver and it tries to explain to you the change that occurs when you get behind the wheel of a car and your personality changes because within your space, and Gary Newman sang about this, this is my car, this is my space, I'm safe inside here, no one can hurt me, no one can touch me. And this is where road rage comes from. It's, it's, it, it, a, a confrontation between two people goes much further than it would if they just happened to walk up to each other in the street. And the same happens on the web, especially when people engage in something called sock puppeting where instead of hiding behind a single nickname, they use several different nicknames. Yeah, Tim's right, Tim's great, yeah, terrific. You know, it's, it's just, and they use this to try and outnumber and then bully their victims into submission with invented personas. You know, it's all this kind of stuff is, uh, uh, it's, it's something every commercial interest has to be aware of because uh, uh, they've probably been the, um, at the sharp end of some uh, consumer objections and consumer movements before, but nothing harsher than the web. That's a pretty good question. Um, I would think that the uh, 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 Google provides web statistics in terms of uh, um, keyword demand. If you uh, if you search up the uh, AdWords keywords tool and it will provide you with keyword data in response to certain queries. You could, theoretically, in court, submit not only um, uh, the traffic figures, if you could secure them, and you probably need a legal letter to do it if you get somebody else's website, but you could also uh, say, look, 120,000 people saw it because 120,000 people searched for the word and this headline was amongst the top 10. And I'll uh, let you in on another little bit of Google that's going to be an interesting uh, 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 area of law very, very soon. It's predictive searches. If um, This is the new Google bombing. Uh, you explained Google bombing before. My, I only engaged in one Google bomb ever, honest. And I thought it was worth it. Um, I made Tony Blair the top search result for liar. And uh, it stuck for a year. Uh, uh, and the new Google bombing is uh, in predictive search. If you can get together with a few mates and uh, 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 you type in the mate's name and then rape conviction, all right, or rape allegation, or drug rumours, Google will start predicting that text for other people who type that name and you haven't had to publish anything anywhere. Now, Google is based in America and it's almost impossible to get them to play ball with simple things like this. Uh, um, and I should know because, well, you know, I, <clears throat> let's just say that if you dare to disagree with certain Tories, you'll get smeared as a convicted pedophile because they're nice people. Um, so, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's unknown. Uh, but there are, there are measurements that you could use. But uh, because it's... Uh, um, it would, it would need precedent, basically. Theoretically, yeah, I can see the reason why uh, um, a, a site's position in the top five, for example, for somebody's name. You could use the search data to show that, look, 120,000 people saw it uh, um, uh, and base your damages on that. But the page rank alone, that doesn't tell the whole story. It's the positioning. You'd have to get some kind of data that suggested more people actually saw it, not maybe saw it in theory, 